phases of the contest prep in terms of rates of loss. Now, pre-contest prep diet mini cut, <coughs> excuse me, should be pretty aggressive. <clears throat> get in, get out. Then you want to go to a maintenance phase, which means you are not at a calorie deficit. Right? So this is how we're piecing all this together now. So you might go 2% per week over four weeks into a four week or four to eight week uh, gain uh, gaining phase. So that is like if you go to maintenance calories and you really prioritize some weak points, for example, uh, you might have really small delts like me. Um, and in that eight week phase, you just blast your delts, right? On maintenance calories, you might actually see some growth, okay? Um, now the honeymoon phase, this is the sweet spot where we come out of the gate, so you know, typically one to 1.5%, our food's gonna be high, and after a gain taining phase, we're just gonna see fat fall off, right? It's gonna feel great. This is the part where people, they love it. And again, it's the honeymoon phase for a reason. And when you fall in love with someone, or you met that person, and it's just amazing at the start, all you can see is this really prosperous future. You just get so blindsided by your emotions and how amazing everything is that you forget all sense of reality. Yeah, that's this phase. You're losing at a good rate. It's like, fuck, this is easy. I'm killing it. Yeah, food's high. Then you go into the digging phase where things slow down to 0.25. 0.5% of body weight per week. So remember, we've got less fat, which means we can lose less fat, which means that things should reflect that change in our body fat mass. And this is marriage. This is when you think, fuck, why don't they buy me roses every week anymore? Why don't we have sex three times a day anymore? Right? What have I got myself into? This thing's for life. Holy shit. When's the end? I just want to die. No, I'm kidding. Nobody feels like that about marriage. Just ask a married person. Um, but then we peak. So we start bringing calories back in. We increase food. We potentially drop down cardio. And all of a sudden, you know, it's the twilight years. You realize, you know, when you're 50 and 60, you're still married to the same person. It's like, well, I'm stuck with you anyway. I'm going to die. Might as well die with someone next to me and you finish off. That's what the peak is, right? And then at the end, it's all over, right? So that's uh, a little way to conceptualize it. So this is where our reverse diet uh, ideally takes place and we, we finish up. So again, walking through these phases, you can see here, more body fat, more fat to liberate the pre-contest diet, a high end rate of loss, getting somebody to healthy lean. Uh, in the honeymoon phase, We slow things down, right? So we uh, potentially reverse diet out of that aggressive deficit. I'm gonna show you what this looks like. Uh, we drop fatigue, so we have potentially a couple of diet breaks. We'll talk about that more soon. We get down to beach lean, which is like that eight to 12% range. Then we move into the digging phase. Less body fat, slower rate of loss. Uh, and then, you know, we get truly shredded. So here's a really cool example of how we apply all these strategies to a real person in real time. So this is my client Damon from February until, or well before February, sorry, December, sorry, December until now. Okay, so here's his pre-contest diet. Made sure that he could track his calories, report all the data, check in properly, knew the process, and obviously here's his calories and his body weight. And we didn't do too much changing, but it was a pretty aggressive deficit. Look at the body weight. From 83, 79, or 70, 78, 78 and a half. So from 83 to 78 and a half. Pretty aggressive in a couple of months. So that was about eight weeks? But that was a little bit less. Okay. Like six weeks. <clears throat> then we did the old reverse diet. So this is how I apply the reverse diet. So within the contest prep, we started to close the size of the energy deficit. 
still at an energy deficit. We started bringing his calories back up to slow down the rate of loss. You can see here, he stayed at the same body weight. Just started to lose a little bit towards the end, right? But I got his fucking calories from 2,400 <coughs> at the lowest here to lowest here to eight, two nine, sorry, two nine here at the end of the reverse diet. 2,900 calories at 78 kilos. The honeymoon phase. This is fucking epic. I'm losing fat. I'm looking shredded. I'm, my food's going up. My coach is a genius. This is brilliant. Then, the digging marriage is coming. So I thought I'd better buy him some extra roses, chocolate, give him a little bit of extra sex. Now, that's the overall strategy. Now, within the days, and uh, within the weeks, I've used five, two, so five low days, two high days. I've also used four low days, three high days. If you guys want to see some of his data on the lunch break, I'm happy to show you. Um, I've used days where, uh, weeks where we've had six low days, uh, one high day, right? And obviously his diet break was, uh, <coughs> was seven days of same food. So, you know, we can see here that within a micro cycle, we can manipulate the strategy and how aggressive it is. So during <coughs> this aggressive phase here, he was on a six to one, right? As we started to reverse his calorie intake up, we started to go to a five two and then a four three before we took that maintenance phase. Now when we start aggressive again, we're, we're not going back to this. We're sticking with that you know, four three five two because he's more prone to lose muscle now than he is back here. When, remember, more fat you have, more fat you can lose. The more aggressive your approach can be. Yeah? So as we've gone on through this prep, we've now started to change the microcycle strategy within the mesocycle strategy, right? Remember, we're always trying to lose fat. The mesocycle strategy determines how quickly we want to lose fat, right? And then the microcycle strategy should reflect that. Make sense? So who would have thought before coming here today that you could do a contest prep like that? Anyone? Kind of, but just from speaking to you. Right. Has anyone seen a contest prep done like that? That's how I've pretty much done all my preps for the last 18 months. 